Hey guys, welcome to this new video and in this video I'll be telling you interview questions asked in EY for data analyst. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Also watch all the playlist of the interview questions of the Power BI. And also if you are interested in the podcast interviews, uh, you can watch the podcast section. Okay, so let's get started. In this video, I'll be telling you some EY questions and how you can answer them and tackle your interview. Uh, so that you will be selected as a data analyst basically i'll be telling you some power bi questions and the dax questions okay and how you can answer them so let's get started the number one question is the self introduction in any interview they will ask you the self introduction so you can tell that hello my name is rajat jain uh, i work as a power bi expert in current uh, at uh, for example lti i've been in the field for nine years helping companies turn raw data into the clear interactive reports i specialize in data modeling tax calculation and performance optimization in power bi i am applying for the role of data analyst where i can use my skills to help your team make smart data driven decisions so in this uh, self introduction this should be crisp and clear and this should show your confidence to the interviewer okay let's move on to the next question so previous project discussion so previous project description i have already told in the previous videos like uh, how you can use the star method to describe your project in the short um, again i will be telling you in one of my recent project i built a data model with over 10 tables and millions of rows of a sales data one major challenge was uh, the slow for performance because the model had many unnecessary columns so i solved this by filling out the extra data and using measures which are calculated on the fly instead of a calculated column this made our reports load much faster okay uh, which visuals did you use in power bi and why so you have to tell some visuals and why you have used that so i use bar charts and pie charts to show sales by region and product mix because they are simple and easy to understand i also use line charts for trend over time in some cases i bought in the custom visual so you can name some custom visuals like zebra bi charts uh, from the power bi marketplace to show complex relationship that standard visuals couldn't display well okay so in this way you can describe which visuals you have used so for each and every visual you should know why you are using them in your project how did you optimize the report performance to speed up the report i focus on three areas data reduction okay so how do you reduce the data i load only the unnecessary uh, only the necessary columns and rows like only keeping your favorite toys instead of the whole toy store okay so efficient calculation i prefer using measures over the calculated column because measures use less memory and i simplified the visuals so i limit the number of slicers and complex visuals on one page of my report so that my report pages will load quickly in this way you can tackle this question okay so let's move on to the fifth question difference between uh, sum and sum x so sum the sum function simply adds all the number in a single column it doesn't do any, any extra calculation per row so per uh, row it will not do anything it just add all the numbers in a single column so total sales equal to sum of sales amount okay so when to use it use sum when you want a straight forward total of column values without any modifications sum x is an iterator function so you have to tell that sum x is an iteration iteration uh, functions it goes through each and every row and perform a calculation on each row and then sum up all the results so for example total net sales sum x of sales amount uh, minus the sales discount so whenever you need to do some calculations inside a measure okay so you will use the sum x so that it will go one by one in every row take the sales amount till take the discount and then do the sum of that when to use it uh, use sum x when you need to perform a calculation for each row before adding them up for example if you need to calculate net sales by subtracting discounts from each sales okay so in the end of the video i'll be telling you how you can download this pdf so that you can revise also these things difference between merge and append uh, okay so merge is like uh, combining two tables side by side by matching rows on a common key so merge is like a join what you do in sql 
So if you have one table with customer names and another with customer address, merging them puts the address next to each customer name. Okay. Append is like uh, you are stacking two tables on top of each other because they have the same columns. So for example, you have three uh, columns in one table, three columns in another, and you want to match, uh, you want to append both these tables, then you can use the append function. Okay. So if you have sales data from January in one table and um, sales data from February in another, uh, a table appending them creates one big table which have all uh, like January and February sales data okay so merge is like uh, gluing two pictures together to form a one white pictures while append is like stacking two books one onto another okay then they asked like the DAX uh, function dates in period versus date add so uh, this function return a continuous table of dates okay so dates in period uh, what it will do is it will return the continuous table of dates that start from a specified date and spans a given number of intervals so for example dates in period uh, in the date table you have taken and you have uh, given the date range uh, okay minus 3 and uh, from, for the month you will need this so for example the return uh, it returned the dates for the three months ending on January 1, 2025. Okay, so it will be ending on January 1, 2025 because you have given minus three here. Date add. This function shifts the date in the current filter context by a specified number of intervals. Okay, so instead of generating a new um, continuous period from a fixed start date, it moves the existing sets of a date. So for example, you this shift uh, dates add date table minus one and the year so it will shift to the previous year each date in the current context one year back which is useful for comparing values for previous year so for example you want to compare the values of sales for the previous year so you will use the date at function there and if you want like uh, uh some you want to uh create a table uh, where you can define the table itself okay so you will give this thing dates in period so dates in period is best when you need to generate a new continuous date range whereas date add is ideal when you want to shift the existing date context by a fixed period okay difference between pivot and unpivot so pivot is like converting row data uh, raw uh, row data into the column headers so if I example imagine a table with month and sales pivoting turns each month into its own column with sales number underneath it unpivot is like converting columns into rows so you need to remember like what is unpivoting and what is pivoting okay so unpivoting is like converting column into the rows if you have a table with separate columns for each month unpivoting will turn those columns into two columns one for month and one for sales because it is converting columns into the rows okay pivot is like taking a vertical list and spreading out it horizontally unpivot is like taking a horizontal row and stacking it vertically that's the difference difference between views and stored procedures so views are safe sql queries that look like tables they simply show data without changing it example a view might display a fatal list of all active customers so why we create the views because like if we don't want to give each and everything uh, uh, to the users right uh, so for example you want to maintain something like which you don't want to show you want to don't want to give access to the whole table you will create the view and then give to the user Stored procedures is like collection of SQL statement that can perform co complex operation like updating data, running calculation or returning multiple results. Example is like a stored procedure might update a customer status. So in a stored procedure, you can update it. Uh, you can run a calculation. Okay. And then it will return you something which you have asked for. Whereas in views, you cannot return the result set difference between star schema and snowflake schema so in star schema you have one fact table in between and then all the dimension tables are connected to the one fact table okay it is simple and fast to query okay uh, so 
snowflake is most normalized tables okay normalized means uh, then this dimension table is also divided into month and then month can also be divided into subparts so whenever we divided each and every table it's like a denormalized okay so it is more normalized uh, form of a star schema where dimension table are split into additional table so you can see that one fact table is connected to the one dimension table and one dimension table again connected to, to the one more uh, sub dimensions tables okay so for example here also product is divided into brands and brands can be divided into uh, different segments okay what is many to many relationship and how do you resolve it in power bi so many to many relationship happens when multiple rows in one table relate to multiple rows in another table so how you will solve that because many to many relationship will create an ambiguity so you need to solve that uh, because of the relationship issues you need to solve this so how do you solve it you will create one bridge table which have all the unique values that contain all the unique keys from both the tables this convert many to many into one to many relationships making always easier to analyze all the tables okay so you have to tell the interviewer that i will create one bridge table that contains all the unique keys from both the tables so that i will convert my many to many into one to many and one to many from both the tables explain calculated columns versus measure this is very important guys and this is very important question asked in every interview so basically calculated columns are created in the data model and stored as the, as the part of a table calculated once during data refresh and then saved good for row level calculations measures are calculated on the fly based on the current filter context they are dynamic and don't take up storage space ideal for aggregations like totals and average so you have to tell all these three things which are very important so uh, basically measures are fast because they will uh, they will be calculated on the fly and that they don't uh, create some memory space because they will be uh, they will be uh, like running on the fly okay so whenever you run the uh, report then only it will be calculated difference between table and a matrix visuals table visual is display data in rows and columns exactly as it appears similar to a spreadsheet matrix visuals allow you grouping of data on rows and columns with the ability to drill down into details how do you handle performance issues so this is like how do you optimize your power bi reports so first we'll optimize the data model removing unnecessary columns and rows use efficient dax so prefer measures over calculated columns as i told you uh, before also reduce visuals complexity limit the number of visuals and slicers on a single page use aggregations and pre calculations summarize data at the source if possible okay so these uh, this pdf you can download from my top mate i will be posting this uh, the link in the description also if you want to connect with me on one to one basis you can also book a call with me on top mint itself okay uh, so the number 15 question is type of filters in power bi and their impact so we have visual level page level report level and then we have the slices so visual level are apply to a single visuals okay page level affect every visual on one page like a room light that shines on every toy in that room okay this is just an analogy report level filters is like apply to all pages in a report similar to turning on the main power that affects the whole house okay slicers are like special visuals that let users dynamically choose which data to show okay so if you haven't subscribed to my channel guys please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching this video and if your friends are preparing for interviews in ey or deloitte please share my videos with them uh, also one like one comment and one share will help me uh, to get motivated to create more videos like this um, uh, so please support and have a great day and all the best for your interview thank you